Hey everyone, hope everybody's doing all right. Uh, today marks 100 days until Halloween, and if that doesn't get you excited and nervous all together, then by God, you don't need to be watching this channel. You need to be over watching Martha Stewart or Oprah or somebody else because it's all Halloween here. It's nothing but props and all the other good, gracious, whatever you want to call it that goes along with Halloween. So. Um, pretty excited about it and I am nervous because I feel like I'm way behind on a lot of projects. Uh, speaking about a lot of projects, um, there's been a few things that I've been up to. I know it's been a while since I've done an update um, and I know it's been weighing on everybody's mind what happened to the Duckin and got him over here and I was one of the main reasons why I was going to do this video today and I was going to go ahead and create another flicker switch just so that I could put a light bulb under him so you could see him and thought, heck, if I'm going to do that, I might as well at least kind of give a quick tutorial on how you do that. I know most everybody is probably familiar with how you do it. Uh, I know there's a lot of newbies out there that probably could benefit from it, but what the heck, if I'm going to do it, I might as well video it. But before we get started with that, there are a few things that I'd like to discuss first. Um, probably first and foremost, most obvious, Diablo 85. Can't thank you enough, Jose. The shirt is freaking awesome. Absolutely love it. It's my first official um, haunter shirt, uh, vlogger shirt, or whatever you want to call it, uh, haunt vloggers. But um, I, again, I can't thank you enough. Absolutely love it. Came in the mail today. Uh, couldn't was just thrilled to death. Had to rip open the package and get it on right away. So, uh, again, thank you very much. Here it is. If you're not familiar with Diablo 85, um, I'll put him in the um, in the description so that you can go over and check his channel out. Uh, terrific guy. Just builds props like crazy. Puts on a um, a haunted house for charity up in Michigan. Uh, but please go check him out, sub him. Um, he's got all kinds of great stuff. So highly recommend him. Um, another thing which just caught me off guard one day, um, I'm usually not on YouTube a whole lot, um, at least as far as on the computer. But this particular day I was on the computer checking it out and I also swung over and I was checking things out back and forth on Facebook, which I'm not on very often all either but this particular day uh, was on the actual computer and caught Master Fog and they had just posted a little contest um, with a question and so I jumped on board and just started hammering it trying to win and I did I won so pretty excited about that first time I've ever won anything at least for uh, haunt related stuff so what they were doing is for the contest, they were giving away a gallon of Code 6 Fog Juice. Again, this is from Master Fog. Um, I was already planning on using my HauntCast discount to purchase some Fog Juice from them and was just thrilled to death that I was able to pick this up. Of course, they sent a little handwritten note, you know, thanking me for participating on the Facebook and hope we have an awesome Halloween season and happy haunting. So, um, in addition, I went ahead and bought some Creeping Fog. Creeping Fog Juice is um, their low line. It's great for chilling. So, uh, looking forward to trying out both of these. So this is going to be a lot of fun. I first time I've ever had professional fog juice. So, looking forward to that. But again, thrilled to death to have won that. Um, let me think. What else has been going on? Um, well, I guess one of the things. And I know that quite a few of you guys out there are probably in the same boat I am. You've got kids, you've probably got dogs as well, and I've got both. And my wife was getting ready to throw this away, and just like a hunter would, I grabbed it and thought, oh gosh, I need to open that up and see what that's all about. And that was on a Monday. That Later that week, um, Still Be Studios, Alan Hops, ended up posting a video on this same thing which so I, I Tommy couldn't have been any better I was thrilled to death to see it because I was all ready to break into this thing and try to figure out how to mess with the speaker and all that good stuff and um, thanks to him I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna ram a screwdriver into the speaker but what this was was a duck dance 
Um, let's see if I can trigger him real quick. Hey, do you want to do the chicken so, dance? Okay, ready? The chicken dance, whatever, duck dance. So we've got the flapping arms, we've got a moving mouth. Um, there we go. I'm going to shut up. But, um, so I figured if I could pop that speaker and with this kind of motion and even with the mouth, there's got to be something that I can come up with for this. So um, I've thrown plenty of these away in the past. I don't know what made me stop and grab this one. Um, thank God I did because I would have been highly disappointed if I had thrown that thing away and then turn around and saw Alan do his vlog knowing I just tossed one. So uh, once again, saved myself uh, a little treat. So who knows what I'm going to do with this thing. I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to coming up with something for it. And then of course later on he posted a video um, of how to add a motion sensor to this because this these two wires went to the little foot that you pressed and it triggered it to set it off so um, this thing we can hook up to a motion sensor and, and come up with something I figured you know if anything this can make a good bat who knows but got to come up with something for it um, out out and about looking at goodwill items for my props as well as my Halloween costume and my big find, which I was thrilled to death to, to get a hold of, was a black trench coat. So I'm in the process of making a large scarecrow and was hoping to get a hold of one of these, and I did. Happened to be also colored the tag 50% off. Um, so I was able to get this for $2.95. Pretty good deal. It also was had a zip-in liner, which I won't use for that prop, but unzip it's got arms it's got the whole nine yards um, so basically I got a whole second coat because I mean for a prop who cares if it's a if it's the inside liner so um, kind of got a two for one deal on it as far as prop making so what I'll do is I got to distress this thing um, I like to just tie it to the back of the car and start driving around with it for a while I know it may look crazy but uh, it's a great way to get just all that road rash and just tear it up and fray it uh, and get it warm um, so I've got that to mess with. Also, that day I was able to pick up a bag of raffia at Goodwill, um, unopened. So that's going to come in handy as well for the scarecrow. And they also, which I, I'm just not into these this electronic stuff, and, and really want to be because you can do a lot of exciting things with it. I mean, the duck for one, it's obviously a piece of cake. I'm not going to have to really get into the electronics on it. Uh, but there was one of these. Douglas furs there that I picked up for three bucks and I know Josie gal has done a tree um, I know I've seen all kinds of uh, Hacks online on how to hack this thing so you can put your own voice or music whatever you want to it um, and then Utilize that face and that movement for something else. So when I saw it I figured I'd pick it up and It'd get me out of my comfort zone, but I think it might be fun. It'd be something completely different to work with. So, kind of excited about it. Um, otherwise, I've been busy making all kinds of stuff. I've been making vines. Uh, I probably, I guess, I could show you guys how I'm doing this in another video instead of wasting time on this one. But um, I've got a lot of these things to be making for my costume as well as some of the other props. So. Um, real easy way to make vines. I'll have to show you guys how to do that here soon. Um, also, tore into my massagers. I know most everybody uses these massagers as is and just works with this, but for the scarecrow that I'm working on, I plan on using one of these in kind of an unconventional way. And I went ahead and just unscrewed the body just to get down to the guts of this thing. And there's quite a bit to to be had with this. Obviously, here's the main motor. Just goes up. It's got a central shaft that comes up and is geared down into your left and your right to cause the movement. This happens to be out of, if you watched one of my earlier vlogs, this happens to be out of the, the oldest massager. Uh, biggest difference from this to the new one is it just had a single shaft that has nothing more than a bend in it that creates that that um, that off-center spin on it. A um, couple things you could do, obviously you could try to replace this, you could bend these straight so you have straight turns versus the oblong, um, or 
there's just four screws. You can take this thing straight off and you've got a center shaft that you can attach to and just use this motor as any other motor um, that you would have. The biggest difference though is this is going to spin much faster than what this is because it does gear it down. So you've got to keep that in mind depending on what kind of prop you're making. I know that you can buy um, or I've seen people do put different switches on it so you can adjust how fast it runs. That I don't know about. I don't. I really haven't gotten into anything quite that far with these, but I'm kind of glad that I can see that all this was still pretty self-contained within the, the housing just because I didn't need all that bulk and didn't want all that bulk with my scarecrow because this is going to end up residing down in the chest of me. So I'm kind of happy with it. I'm not sure if I'll end up using the old one or the new one. This is the newer style. Um, you can see it's almost exactly the same. Biggest difference is they didn't use a central shaft to go all the way through. Um, but that's to our advantage because it's a straight shaft with this um, adapter that just has a set screw in it. So you can take this Allen screw out and you can pull this off and you wind up with a straight shaft. Uh, the only thing they've done is that's how they've off-centered this so that it creates that, uh, that movement. So if anything, this might afford itself a few other options than just having that kind of that off-centered uh, turn to it. So. Don't be afraid to dig into these and see what the guts are all about. Because they're, this, I was really happy to see that these were so self-contained. You will have to make sure you mount this pretty well. Um, this is uh, this had a back uh, a back piece that turns, which looks like it's nothing more than it acts as a cooling fan to, to cool this down. So you will have to make sure that that's clear if you mount that. But I'll get into that a little bit later um, as I get into the scarecrow. Hopefully things work out. Uh, the way I have vision in my head, and it's going to be a little different. Hopefully, it um, might be something new that nobody's seen. They like said it's going to be a little more unconventional on how I'm going to go about putting that together. But let's go ahead and get started on this flicker, and that way I can show you what this guy's all about and how he turned out. Um, there's several different ways that you can go about doing this. I've done them several different ways as far as what the components are. are. Um, I've done everything from take a straight lamp uh, that already has the socket and has the cord and has a plug in and just splice into one side of that cord and place the uh, the starter and then this is the whole this is the guts to it this is what causes all that flicker this is nothing more than a fluorescent starter this happens to be an FS2 they have FS5 FS4 uh, FS25 I think it is um, a lot of that just depends on what wattage of bulb you're using and then that in combination with this will determine how fast or how much of a flicker you get. Sometimes it'll be extremely slow, sometimes it'll be pretty quick and random. Um, it's just kind of hit or miss, you can just play with it. I find the FS2 is the easiest uh, to use and works uh, very well. So again, fluorescent starter. This happens to be an FS2. You can pick this up at any hardware store where they have the fluorescent ballast. And um, besides taking the lamp structure and just splicing into it, um, I've also just taken a cheap extension cord that's got the plug at one end and the receptacles at the other. And again, uh, you've got the two cords coming down through it. Take a knife, slice right into the middle of that cord and so that you can separate the two wires and then just strip back or cut the one side and put this in the middle of it. And then the third way, which probably looks the cleanest and gives you a little bit more flexibility, um, is use, utilizing an old cord. Um, I keep a lot of these cords around. They'll come from anything from old appliances that broke. I'll cut the cord off or I'll take the thing apart just to see what it's all about and then uh, see what parts I could use. But I tend to keep the cords. I think this one came off of an old coffee maker we had, so it's not very long. Um, another example is here's a very, very long cord, uh, which can come in handy. And it is also a grounded cord, three plugs, so it's great for outdoors. And this came off an old vacuum cleaner. So I've got a very long cord. It's got the three traditional wires, hot, neutral, and ground. And um, just a tip, You've got some old appliances or anything that you're getting ready to toss, cut that cord off. For us haunters, this uh, this is good as gold because you're, you're going to wind up buying extension cords anyway. You 
you're throwing that stuff uh, in the garbage otherwise. So again, what I've done is I've just taken one of our cords from our from an old appliance. Um, this is just a typical um, I don't know utility box. Uh, Single gang box, I think is what it's called. Again, I'm not an electrician and don't claim to be. And and by all means, anything I show you here, I don't warranty any of this and I don't condone any of this. <laughs> just because I'm not licensed, um, this is just stuff that I've played around with that I've picked up off the internet as well. And I'm uh, just happy to pass some of this information on. But besides the gang box, um, got a receptacle and also just a cover plate along with the starter. Um, that's really the only thing that's needed here. Uh, all of this, I think this thing was um, maybe 30 cents. This was about 30 cents and this was a buck something. And two, the package of the starters is two dollars, so a dollar a starter. And then of course the uh, free plug. Um, so what, we got, so maybe two, three dollars into this to make it flicker. Um, but what we're going to do is I went ahead and pushed this on through uh, the gang box to where we can put the cord through. I brought it on up. I've split these things out. I do have a ground and I've got a hot and I've got a neutral. Um, one of the things I'm going to go ahead and do while I've got these two out is I'm going to uh, what's called tinning the two ends here, which is nothing more than putting solder on them to make it more of a solid wire because these are a multi-strand uh, copper wire. Um, and I want that to be a solid so that I can push this down in here and tighten it up and keep it from unfraying and, and loosening up. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the ends of these with some solder to make these solid. Okay, now that we've got the ends soldered up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these sides and I'm just going to snip it off and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to strip a very healthy amount off of here. Exposing quite a bit of wire. I'm going to go ahead and twist it up and then I'm going to do the same thing on the piece that I cut off. I'm going to go ahead and give myself a pretty decent amount to work from. The reason for that is these starters have two little knobs that come off of them. I'm going to take the wire that I've stripped off and I'm going to wrap it around it. Come back on itself and try to twist these up as tight as I can get them. And of course that one didn't work. Take two. Then I'm going to do the same thing on the opposite side. Wrap this booger around here. Try to get it as tight as possible. So that's left us with this starter now in line with one of these wires. And that's what I was talking about when I mentioned the extension cord or even the cord that's coming off of the light where if you imagine this if this was together as one wire where you can split the two wires, pull them apart, um, or even if you just did that down the middle and pulled them apart so that you've got an opening where you can cut this and then strip it and just put this in line with it. Now I'll tell you, I've seen people solder these and I've soldered them in the past, um, but I have not had much luck trying to solder these things. I don't know if it's the fact that um, the inner workings in here. What's not inside here is just a tiny little bulb. Um, I'm not really sure all the details of how this works. I'm going to assume that inside this, or even with that bulb, maybe it works a lot like uh, 
some other circuits where it heats up and it touches and comes off. Well, I don't know what it is, but trying to solder this thing has always caused me issues. Uh, it takes forever for it to heat up. I don't know if it's because it's trying to heat up the hole inside and maybe that's causing some other issues. I don't know. Um, but regardless, considering what I'm doing it for and what this is, I found it just as easy, if not better, to just hot glue the top out of it. Keeps them in place, keeps them from moving, um, and at least for me, it serves the same purpose, and I get the same results out of it. So I'll help hot melt that on. I'm gonna let that set up just a little bit because I've had that hot glue gun on for a while, so it's extremely uh, hot and runny. So I'm gonna let that set up and I'm gonna put a little bit more on there just to make sure that I've got good contact and that it's solid. Um, and I'll still, I'm gonna take some electrical tape and I'm gonna wrap over the top of it just to cover those contacts, just to, to help hold everything in place a little bit more uh, securely. Um, I do just feel a little uncomfortable about not soldering it, but again, I've had some problems with it. And this has served me just as well. I figured it's not conductive and it's all on the same line, so I should be okay. I think while I wait for that, I'm going to go ahead and trim some of this off. This is going to be my ground. I'm going to go ahead and strip it and get it ready for the plug. I didn't need to tin this or anything. So all I'm going to do is just wrap it around and tighten up that ground. Covered. I'm going to go ahead and shoot some hot glue into this just to hold this uh, wiring in place because it is slipping out of here pretty easy. Just shoot some of that down there, hold it in place. And we're going to go ahead and make our connections on the outside here. So all I've done is just connected the wires. I've got my ground connected and just connected this like I normally would for any plug. Uh, put the, the hot side on the, the one and the neutral on the other. And then we're just gonna work this in here. There should still be plenty of room with this. Just get it tucked into one of the corners and you shouldn't have any problems at all fitting this plug into place. I'm gonna go ahead and get that tightened in there.
get that tightened in. Here's our plug and our cord straight to it. Then go ahead and finish it off by putting a cover plate on. But before I do that, one thing I would like to do is plug this in before I put the cover plate on, just so I can double check, make sure that there's nothing, nothing crazy or obvious inside. such as spark, smoke, fire, all that good stuff. And so far so good. Don't see anything, so that's a good sign. We're gonna go ahead and put this cover on here. That's all there is to it. Now we've got our own plug that has our built-in flicker into it. We can plug two uh, lights into this. And I will probably take a, well, I know I will. I'll take a permanent marker right on the side of this if this happens to be a flicker, just in case if I do some more or have others that look just like this. Um, and I'll go ahead and put which flicker it is. We can easily replace that if that flicker does go bad. We can just pop this out. And since we've only hot glued it, we can rip that hot glue back off and just put a different starter onto it. So I do have just a small lamp here that we can test this guy out on. Go ahead and plug him back in. And we got that plugged in. Let's go ahead and plug in our lamp and check this guy out make sure we're doing good and there we go we got our flicker and I think this might just be a 60 watt bulb um, depending on what wattage bulb that you do use will vary the flicker so what brings us to this whole point is our ducking if you remember and recall I was having some fits and issues with a pumpkin I started and it certainly did not end up turning out anything like I had expected it wasn't what I envisioned I'll probably try it and attempt it again to get the screaming look that I was after but uh, if you've watched, watched a previous vlog you saw what this thing looked like and um, this thing looked like a duck no matter what how you cross your eyes, whatever, this thing was a duck, and it was pissing me off. And this thing caused me all kinds of problems and fits. So I put him off to the side, um, would come back to him every now and then, and just worked on him and worked on him. This is the most I've ever worked on a freaking pumpkin, and hopefully the last time I'll work on one that much. But I think he turned out pretty good. Um, tried a few different things on him that I had not done in the past. Um, of course, before was the fact that I cut the mouth open and repositioned it down to where it, uh, into a different spot. Uh, one of the things I did, because uh, I did not like the shape of the face, and I was trying to hide the fact that he looked like a duck, um, I started adding a lot of different areas all down in between it, just with uh, cutouts in it. I did all this out of paper clay. Um, even after the fact, I went back in and cut additional holes out into the body of it. Um, added a lot of paper clay to this thing, built them up uh, just to change the overall look. Uh, I also did a lot of just uh, when I skinned him, I left a lot of pieces just hanging on him um, just to kind of give it a torn, just rotted look to him. You can see a lot of this just uh, pieces hanging off of him just to make it look like he's been rotting. When I painted him, Painted him just like I normally did any pumpkin, um, covered it over, did a sealed him with the black asphalt uh, sealer, went back through with the different oranges, did not like the way he looked because he was supposed to look kind of disgusting and, and rotting. So I went back with the sealer with a very small brush and started brushing in all the real uh, low spots and just kind of dragging it down um, to give that that kind of that dark rotted look to it in all of the cavities 
Hopefully that's showing up on this video. You can see all that. Gave him a much darker um, look to him. And I love that. I, I absolutely love the look of that. So I think I'll have to repeat that a few more times in the future um, on going back with the black after the fact. Um, went ahead and sealed him. Uh, this time I used a satin, and I really like the, the look I got out of it. Uh, just It still has a, a shininess to it, which I think is going to be really nice. Kind of gives it that wet, nasty look. And I went back to my old faithful, which was Minwax. If you had watched my tutorial, I had tried a different um, spar varnish. I used Rust-Oleum and completely dissatisfied with it. Uh, I can't stand the way it turned out. It's, it's awful. Otherwise, Rust-Oleum products are usually really good. That's why I thought, what the heck, I might as well try a different brand and I'll try them all and see what it turns out. And learned the hard way. Never use it again. I don't like it. Um, there, here's the original pumpkin from the tutorial. There is a huge difference between these two and the way it went on and the way it applied. And I just threw away the rest of it because I was so disgusted with it, I'll never use it again. But went back to Old Faithful, which was just the min wax. This time I tried the clear satin and um, it performed just as well as it had in the past, if not better. And I really like the satin look to it. And uh, I guess we'll, let's see what he looks like with the light underneath him. I haven't tried it yet, so I'm, I'm just as, uh, as excited and curious probably as anybody else is to see what this guy looks like with the light underneath him. This light's going to be too long, so we'll just kind of have to um, make do and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe I can just suspend him on it for the time being just to show you guys without, without breaking it, but there he is. He went from the ducking to smiling, so um, kind of gives that creepy, eerie look to him. I, I hope you guys like him just as much as I do. I'm thinking about using him as the head for my scarecrow that I'm working on. Um, he's really big and massive, but I think it's going to make a nice look and present well. But you can see what a difference it makes having a flicker bulb inside these things. So let me know what you think. Now, I've also been working on another pumpkin for a fellow haunter that we all know, at least I, I would think most of us know him, um, and that's Scott Squatch. And you need to check him out, um, especially if you're watching me, you would certainly like watching him. He does an episode called The Haunt Insider. So if you're like me, you're searching around on YouTube anyway for different things that are haunt related, and he kind of cuts a lot of that, uh, that goose chase out for you. So um, presents pretty often with the Haunt Insider. He usually puts on three different uh, haunts that are on YouTube, so you can go back and check it out and sub them. Um, but I've been working on a pumpkin for him. It's just kind of a, a thank you earlier this year. Uh, as most of you know, he's been out touring with corn, and I was able to hook up with him up in Indy, and um, was a great host, showed me around, so just kind of as thanks back to him, uh, I decided to make a pumpkin for him. So without further ado, here is his pumpkin. Oh, this is going to be boxed up and on its way this week on down to Scott and I hope he enjoys it. Well, we're going to get him all bagged up here and uh, since I had to make some uh, some foam to fill in the, the box I'm going to be putting this in anyway, I went ahead and just kind of made a crate out of the foam so Scott Enjoy the crate too. Just a little added bonus. Use it for whatever. I really hope you enjoy this guy and he can find a proud home within your haunt. I can't thank you enough for the hospitality. Oh, there he is. And you certainly didn't think I was going to let you see what this guy looks like before you actually got him, did you? Yeah, right. So if you want to see what this pumpkin looks like, um, you've got to go over and check out Scott's channel. Again, it's uh, it's JHMDF, and I'll have it down in the description as well. 
Uh, he's looking to get, he needs 200 additional subs between now and Halloween to hit 1,000. So if you haven't already, get over to his channel, give him a sub. You're going to love what you see. And uh, I promise you, he's got a lot of great stuff on his, uh, his channel when it comes to haunt related. And as an added bonus, if you're a gamer, um, he's got plenty of that too, trust me. So this is on its way. Again, if you want to see what this guy looks like, make sure you go give him a sub. I'm sure he'll video this uh, when he gets it. But I think that's about all I have. Um, again, there's 100 days left. Oh, speaking of 100, I know everybody's been doing contests for 100 or 200, 500, you know, all these uh, uh, milestones. And because of that, I went and checked out on the computer my channel. And I have no idea how this has happened, uh, especially in a relatively short amount of time. Why anybody is watching me anyway is beyond me, but I have, as of today, 99 um, subscribers. So I'm one away, one from 100, and blows my mind. And I don't know how it happened. Again, I, it's not like I've put that many videos up. So on this 100th day till Halloween, I have 99 subs. So um, I guess as tradition has it, I'll put something together. I have no idea what. So I, um, go ahead. Let's just do it. We'll make it official. Um, go ahead. Give me a thumbs up. Make sure you comment on this video. And I will do a drawing once I hit that hundredth uh, person. So again, you have until I get the hundredth person. Now, obviously, if that hundredth person comes between now and then, it'll just be whoever comments on this video, and I'll give it at least 24 hours. But uh, I guess once I get the hundredth, I'll give it 24 hours, and then I'll do a drawing, and that's when I'll cut it off. So um, make sure you give me a like, a thumbs up, give me a comment, and out of those, I'll do a drawing. I have no idea what I'll give away, but I'll come up with something. Um, I'm just as surprised uh, to, ha to even have that many. I would have never even guessed I was near that. So so it hasn't really been on my mind. It hasn't something I've, I've put any thought into, but I certainly will now. But again, hope you like what you what you see. Scott, I hope you like this. Thanks, Jose. Diablo85, make sure you go check him out. Unbelievable. Master Fog, check them out too. Um, there's a lot of things going on, and I would imagine we're going to see a whole lot uh, in these next 100 days. So, um, Haunters for Life, peace out, happy haunting, get your haunt on. Uh, whatever you do, just get busy, start making stuff. We'll talk to you later.